Okay, so let's talk about um, Senator Elizabeth Warren, my, my, my all-time uh, favorite, most evil senator in, uh, in the Senate. Uh, she was, she, if she had been the Democratic nominee, I might have actually brought myself to vote for Donald Trump. That's how evil I think she is. Um, so Elizabeth Warren is, yes, I mean, the most vicious and the most, um, one of the most intellectual, so uh, smart, uh, but, but fascist, all-out fascist um, senators out there. And, and uh, there was a series of tweets. So two things happened. One, a series of tweets in which Elizabeth Warren really revealed herself, I think, in, a, in an important way. But what is truly stunning, what is truly amazing, was truly reason for celebration. Uh, you know, I've always talked about the fact that corporations, if only they'd stood up for themselves, if only they'd defend themselves, if only they'd... Well, somebody, some alien, has taken, or maybe some objectivist, has taken over, I'm convinced of this, taken over the official Amazon News Twitter feed and has been tweeting... I mean, mixed stuff, but like stuff that's a hundred thousand times better and standing up to Elizabeth Warren. And that is just mind blowing. And I've been waiting for something like this to happen. And, and I, I don't think the world will change. I don't think we have any chance of cultural change until a lot of this happens and much better than what Amazon is doing. But a lot of this happened. But it's it's stunning. So first, it started all, all of this started, so this is, there's a series of tweets here. I'm going to walk you through uh, what happened. So Elizabeth Warren, uh, I guess it was two days ago, tweeted uh, a video of her where she discusses tax policy, and she talked about, this is the tweet, right? So I'm going to read you the tweets. Giant corporations like Amazon report huge profits to their shareholders, but they exploit loopholes and tax havens to pay close to nothing in taxes. That's just not right. And it's why I'm introducing a bill to make the most profitable companies pay a fair share. Now, I think, I, you know that I think the fair share for successful large corporations is exactly zero because they've been successful. And the fact that they're large means they're successful. And therefore, it means that they've already contributed to all of our lives tremendously, why would we tax them and inflict that pain on them on top of, every, of everything else? And of course, economically it makes no sense because corporations don't pay taxes. They don't pay taxes because they pass those taxes on to shareholders a little bit, employees quite a bit, and customers a lot. So if you raise corporate taxes, you're raising prices, you're reducing wages, and, and a little bit, you're reducing the return on capital for shareholders. But the evidence is unequivocal. I, I mean, I don't think the economists would question this. So the only economic moral appropriate corporate tax rate is zero. And if you want to tax, tax the people who, you know, who receive these, you know, corporate earnings. And you already do. Wages, capital gains, dividends, all of that is already taxed. Corporate taxes is a, in a sense, it's a double taxation on top of that. So of all the taxes out there, corporate taxes are probably the most Stupid, economically inefficient, and morally offensive. Right? So I'm against all taxes, as you know. But this one is particularly bad. The, a flat tax is fine, but the corporate tax should be zero. Or if you're worried that people will shift money to their corporations or whatever, then make it zero for public corporations and make it equal to the personal tax rate for everybody else. Oh, find a way to get rid of that loophole. But, you know. 
Anyway, Elizabeth Warren is complaining about basically loopholes and tax havens. Now, of course, I think it's the fiduciary duty of publicly traded corporations to maximize their tax savings to exploit every loophole possible, to exploit every tax haven possible. It's their fiduciary duty to their shareholders to maximize the share price, which means to minimize tax expenses. But Elizabeth wants, wants to condemn them for doing that. So this is Amazon's response. Now, again, it's not an ideal response, right? I just gave you close to an ideal response. But at least it's a response. At least it's somewhat of Amazon standing up for itself. So here's what Amazon writes. This is Amazon News Twitter account, the official Amazon News Twitter account. You make the tax laws, Senator Warren. We just follow them. If you don't like the laws you've created, by all means, change them. Here are the facts before we get to them. So Amazon is saying, you make the tax laws. Why are you complaining? Which is true. Which is true. Now, of course, the response shouldn't be change them. The response should be, here's, here's the morality of taxes. Here's what makes sense in terms of taxes. Here's what they should be. But okay, but at least Amazon is saying, don't blame us for abiding by laws you, as a senator, are responsible for. So that's point number one Amazon is making. Second, here are the facts. Amazon has paid billions of dollars in corporate taxes over the past few years alone. True. In 2020, we had another $1.7 billion in federal tax expense, and that's on top of $18 billion we generated in sales taxes for states and localities in the U.S. Congress, des Congress designed... Where is it? Congress designed tax laws to encourage investment in the economy. Well, if it, it designed tax laws to encourage investment, then taxes on a corporation like Amazon would be zero. Because what a waste to take money from the most productive members of our economy, you know, successful corporations, and give it to the least productive members of our society, government. So every dollar that is saved by a loophole is a dollar that goes to productive activity in the U.S. economy. Point number three Amazon News makes, and this is not... So what have we done about it, about the investment in the economy? $350 billion of investments since 2010. $350 billion, that's a lot of money. 400,000 new U.S. jobs Last year alone, 400,000 new jobs created in the United States during COVID. And while you're working on changing the tax code, can we please raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour? It drives me nuts that that's part of Amazon's PR, but it is. It's a huge part of Amazon's PR. Like, we pay our employees $15 an hour, You should, you know, law should make that a requirement. So, you know, Amazon, of course, why did Amazon even engage in $15 an hour minimum wage? It did it in order to appease its critics who came after it because it was not paying a living wage. And, and when it did raise the, their minimum wage to $15 an hour, they cut bonuses, they cut benefits they, for certain employees so that overall, the total costs didn't go up that much. And some employees actually got a wage cut because even though they made less than $15 an hour, they made more on bonuses, and those bonuses were trimmed. So Amazon is being inconsistent, obviously. 
But this is where I think it really gets better. So Amazon is saying, look, you wrote the laws. We're following the laws. We invest the money. We create jobs. We're doing an amazing job. What do you want from us, Elizabeth Warren? If you want to change the laws, go change the laws. Take responsibility. This is Elizabeth Warren's response. Now, I thought that Amazon News response was okay. You know, Amazon News said, you make the laws, Senator Warren. We just follow them. If you don't like the laws you've created, by all means, change them. Here's Elizabeth Warren's response. I didn't write the loopholes you exploit, Amazon. Your armies of lawyers and lobbyists did. But you bet I'll fight to make you pay your fair share and fight your union busting and fight to break up big tech. Why? So you're not powerful enough to heckle senators with snotty tweets. Oh my God. This is a U.S. senator responding to Amazon. She didn't write the loopholes. Who did? Who did? Really? The armies and lawyers and lobbyists did? No, Senator. It's your frigging responsibility to write the loopholes. And if you didn't write them, then who did? Why weren't you involved? It's your job, not the lobbyists. How much were you paid off not to write the loopholes? And, Senator, did you vote against all these bills? Can we see the track record? Even Obama's bills that kept the loopholes that you voted for? Don't tell us it's lawyers and lobbyists as if you, as a United States senator, have no responsibility for the laws passed under your watch. No, Senator Warren, you are responsible. Now, I love the loopholes. I think they're great. But then she says, she's going to make you pay your fair share. Who gets to decide what the fair share is? Elizabeth Warren. She's going to make you bust up your unions. Why? Because she decided so. And she's a politician. And you're just a productive individual creating 400,000 jobs. God forbid. She is going to tell you how to run your company. She is going to tell you how to deal with your unions. And here's the... Here's where she's channeling, and I know you don't like to hear this, but here she's channeling Donald Trump. And fight to break up big tech. So you're not powerful enough to heckle senators with snotty tweets. Isn't every American powerful enough to heckle senators with snotty tweets? Isn't the whole point of the First Amendment that every American has an inalienable right protected by our Constitution to heckle senators with snotty tweets? Isn't that the very essence of what it means to have free speech? Isn't that the very essence of the First Amendment? I mean, what we should all be doing, all be doing, this is a call to action, to all objectivists and free market advocates out there, all people who believe in free speech, all people who believe in any kind of freedom, please, please, please go on Twitter. Even if you just do this once, go on Twitter and write a snotty tweet to Senator Elizabeth Warren. Please. This is how you fight for freedom. Make a stand. She is explicitly engaged in threatening an American company not to stand up to her because she is a senator. Well, Elizabeth Warren, screw you. You're my servant, not my lord, not my boss, not my overseer, not my philosopher king. You're supposed to serve the people. 
including Amazon, including its 1.4 million employees, including me, including all the people listening to the show who I hope are going to go on Twitter, please, I'm serious, and just tweet to Elizabeth Warren, Warren a snotty tweet on any topic you want. Make it respectful, but make it snotty. I mean, this is the Senate. Now, Trump did this all the time. So Elizabeth Warren, that's why I said she's channeling Trump. Trump would attack Amazon and, and talk about breaking it up because the Washington Post, owned by Jeff Bezos, wrote nasty things about him. But this is horrific coming from any politician in a position of power. This is a violation of the First Amendment. So stand up, stand up. And fight it. Thank you, Naruto. Naruto. <laughs> um, but what's really cool is that Amazon News responded. And this has to be one of the most important, best, powerful tweets by a major, big business that I've ever seen, that I've ever seen. Amazon should get, I don't know, a prize, Amazon News. Whoever runs Amazon News, thumbs up to this tweet. This tweet is amazing. Everybody go find this tweet, like it, and retweet it. This is what Amazon News wrote in response to Elizabeth Warren. This is extraordinary and revealing. One of the most powerful politicians in the United States just said she's going to break up an American company so that they can't criticize her anymore. That is so good. <laughs> I'll read that again to you because it's so good. Amazon, I loved you before. I love you more now, and please, you know, get some prize to Amazon News to the to the employee who runs this. We need to get we need to get them a copy of Atlas Shrugged. This is extraordinary and revealing. One of the most powerful politicians in the United States just said she's going to break up an American company so that they can't criticize her anymore. All right. Go retweet that. Go like that. And go heckle, write snotty tweets to Elizabeth Warren. I mean, if you really got serious about this, you would write Elizabeth Warren a snotty tweet every day. Like, if, if, if people, people want objectivists to get into memes and gifs and whatever, here's a good project for you guys. Do... Like, do a snotty meme every day to Elizabeth Warren. You might actually get, you know, they might actually go viral, and you might actually get real, a really good response. Like, let the, let the juices flow. And if you, if you do one that's particularly you're proud of, you know, see, see me on the tweet so I can see it, right? We need a Twitter army. I was just talking about this with Brad Thompson the other day. And he said, why don't, why don't we have an objectivist Twitter army? Like, BAP has one of these Twitter armies. The left has these cancel culture armies. Others have these Twitter armies. Why can't we, objectivists, why can't some of you young objectivists who, who know how to do these memes and gifs and whatever? Yeah, Jacob, it's time to get back on Twitter. It's time to join the fight. Thank you, can't pronounce something, Corp. <laughs> Appreciate the support. Um, why can't we have a Twitter army and every time Elizabeth Warren just raises her head on Twitter, the army descends on her? I don't know. Am I, is the FBI going to start monitoring my channel? 
I am hereby declaring that trolling, is trolling the right term? Elizabeth Warren is a virtue. You get, you get like objective stars. Oh, no, you don't get objective stars. Let's keep Ayn Rand out of it. You get your own book stars. Yeah, let's cancel Elizabeth Warren. Let's give her hell for wanting to silence Amazon and threatening them with breaking them up. All right, guys. Yeah, that's right, Daniel. Genuine Iran broke. I never made it beyond first sergeant in the Israeli army, but Daniel's just promoting me to general of the Iran broke Twitter army dedicated to eradicating threats to liberty on Twitter. <laughs> hey, Corey, it's great to see you. Thank you for the support. That's great. Really appreciate that. Um, thank you. So, uh, yes, uh, applauds, uh, you know, like, retweet, support Amazon News, not for supporting a minimum wage, but for their standing up to Elizabeth Warren. I, I, I think it's terrific. I really do. So um, I hope you do, too. All right. I, I mean, we really need kind of an army that... that you know, when, when, when people mock Ayn Rand or people make fun of objectivism or make fun of an objectivist, that, like, th th these Twitter objectivists just, in a nice, respectful, philosophical way, right? All right, Travis says he tweeted... Uh, Heckle senators? Question mark. Isn't that a First Amendment right? You deserve the heckling. You deserve to be criticized. Excellent. Thank you. Good job, Travis. Composing my respectful but very snotty tweet now. Thank you, Bonnie. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Go after her. I mean, this is unforgivable. And, and the fact is that Amazon News has only been retweeted like 1,800 times, only been liked 8,491 times. I mean, the Amazon News tweet should be in the millions. It should be viral. It, it's, a, it's an amazing. I mean, Walter Olson, um, Walter Olson writes thank, to Amazon News, thank you for standing up to a bully intent on abusing her Senate post. Haven't agreed with every Amazon decision, right? But from today, I'll start following Amazon News. I followed Amazon News. You guys should follow Amazon News. All right. Cool. I see some objectivist already commented on Elizabeth Warren even before I asked you to, so thank you for doing that. Double up. Keep going. Go at it. Give a comment. Let's see how many people have commented. Yeah, I don't think enough people have commented on mostly objectivists, it looks like, but we need more. Many, many more. Fine, to begin with, I wonder if I can ask you to capsulize, I know this is difficult, can I ask you to capsulize your philosophy? Well, what is Randism? Uh, first of all, I do not call it Randism, and I don't like that name. All I right. call it objectivism. All right meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. Now let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it. And that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely, a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason. A morality 
which can be proved by means of logic, which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right. All right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action, and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind, that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness, and that he must not force other people, nor accept their right to force him, that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for all for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.